Right, so um, time to go through Jan 2013. Um, this is quite a tricky paper, I think. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, question one. It starts off quite nicely, um, pretty much. Just general element that has atoms containing six electrons in a 3D subshell. That, of course, is going to be iron. Um, if you know your electronic, as long as you can do your electronic configuration. Um, two elements that have atoms with two unpaired D electrons is actually titanium and it's going to be nickel because titanium, you've got your 4S here and then you've got your 3D there. Titanium has got two electrons in the D. And then if you carry on for nickel, nickel has that configuration with two, like so. Um, yeah, yeah. Element that forms a blue complex, you need to know your nickel exchange reactions, that's cobalt. Uh, element that forms an oxide, well how do you do that? You take away four oxygens for that, divide by three, find the molar mass. I think most of you are happy to work out that was manganese. How do you work this one out? Well, if each atom has that mass, if you times it by Avogadro's constant, oh my God. that would tell you how much a mole, uh, the molar oh, mass is, uh, which means you get it to be chromium, like so. Okay, so I have got, sorry Hannah, I just think you're counting. Um, Time, 8.64 times 10 to minus 3. I times it by Avogadro's constant, which you remember is on your data sheet. Yeah, times 10 to the 23. Yeah. That gives me 52. Okay. And then you look it up on your periodic table. And that's the MR. That's the MR. Okay. Okay, we now need um, to complete this diagram. Now, the mistake you made, a lot of you, is for the copper one, you replaced four waters with your ammonia ligands, well done. But you still have two waters in your complex, so it's H2O twice. Um, if you add HCl, <coughs> already you know it's copper with four chloride ligands, and it must have a two minus charge. And a pale blue precipitate with sodium hydroxide is obviously going to be copper two hydroxide. Uh, right, for this one, the shape of my nickel complex iron has got to be octahedral because it's got six uh, coordinate bonds. What's the formula containing six fluoride ions? Fluoride, of course, is F minus, so it's going to be nickel. You're going to have six F minuses, so what's got to be the charge four overall? Four minus. Real, four minus. Show the 3D shape of this complex. So you start off with your nickel in the middle. You know, it's up to you how you do this, but I would mean, draw in your bonds, first of all. Put your nitrogens on, like so. You know, rather than put CH2, you can use skeletal formula to do that. And then just put your twos or H2s on, like so. And then it's important to put square brackets around it and it's two plus charge. And then for your mirror image, just do the same. Remember your dashes and wedges, like so. That's got to go there, that one's there, and then that one's there to get your mirror image. Put your H2s on, and it's two plus as well. Right, okay, so, acid base titration curves, right, can be used to show blah, 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 blah. Right, so, what, if you notice, concentrations are the same, so my end point is going to be 25 for both, that's where my vertical section has got to be. This one, I'm starting off with a strong acid, so it's going to start low, at a low pH here, it then goes at 25, and then up, like so. This one, ethanoic acid is a weak acid, so it's going to start higher, goes up, but I still get a strong base, so it goes up like so. So key thing, vertical section must be at 25. That one should start higher. It should be a gradual increase, and you need them both to be, their vertical section to be around here. So you don't need to do the, on the weak acid, you don't need to do it at like a 
Uh, well, that it kind of like goes up more gradually. Yeah. So is that do they not really? Well, well, like more like that. You could do. They more on the mark scheme. They were more concerned. Um, where did you get your marks? You got one mark for it to be a slight rise, then vertical, and then uh, then flat. The pH being higher for this one rather than that one for your next mark. On both graphs, the vertical, vertical section at 25, and then um, the vertical section still had to be, be around here. So you still had to be in the vertical section here because it was a strong base. Uh, right, so the next one explain how the choice of indicators links to the pH curve. Obviously, um, the pH range of the indicator has to change colour in that vertical section. Um, of the pH graph. Um, entropy of neutralization, should we make it a bit bigger again? Um, Always 57. <laughs> yeah. Or 56. Um, entropy change, so the definition, um, <coughs> you've got to have the formation of one mole of water from the reaction of an acid with an alkali. Um, for this one, You've got to work out, this is kind of a bit like um, AS chemistry. Um, student measures out blah, 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 mixes them to temperature rises, specifically calculate the entropy of neutralization. So you can work out your energy, which is equal to the mass of water, which is 70, times the specific heat capacity of water, which they've told you 4.18, times your temperature change, which is 16.5. If you do that, let's cheat, we get uh, 4827.9 joules, which is equal to 4.8279 kilojoules. Um, then you need to um, work out the moles of water formed. So moles of H2O that you're going to form, uh, it's, a, it's a one to one reaction. So. Um, is going to be um, your concentration times by your volume, so you get that to be 0 0.084. You then divide that by that, 4.8279 over 0 0.084, and that, remember it's a minus charge, why is it minus? It's exothermic. It's exothermic, yeah. Kilojoules. Uh, always exothermic, yeah. Right, so this was an interesting one. Um, the student repeats using 70 centimetres cubed of double the, sorry, of half the concentration. Um, uh, so the moles are the same, but the water's doubled for HCl. The temperature is going to be less because I've got more water for the energy. So the same amount of energy will be produced, but that will be, um, that will have to cause the, the temperature rise of a large volume of water. What will that temperature rise be? A lot of you just halved it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you can't do that. Because we worked out that the energy change originally was 4,828, but the volume of water now is 105. Why is that 105? Because it's 70 plus the 35 from your sodium hydroxide. Where's the 4828 come from? Thanks. That's what we worked out in the previous question, the energy produced oh, right there. Um, so if you do that, 4.18 times delta T, you rearrange what your temperature change is going to be. Delta T is going to be 4828 over 438.9, which gives <coughs> you to be 11 degrees C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think it was just saying predict, predict. I think that's why a lot of you just halved it, because you just yeah. thought, oh, yeah. Right, it's definition time. Uh, describe, when you're describing <coughs> words, that's define. Um, entropy change solution and entropy change of hydration. So entropy change of solution, one mole of a compound um, uh, dissolve into the entropy change when you dissolve one mole of a compound. Hydration is when one mole of hydrated ions um, so one mole of gases ions are hydrated. Um, so always remember one mole, I think. Explain the difference between the hydration 
values for sodium and magnesium. If we look at the chart, magnesium is far more exothermic than sodium. Why is that? Well, key things to remember, magnesium 2 plus iron has a higher charge and magnesium 2 plus iron is smaller. Is it? Okay. Otherwise it would be like normally different. Is it? Oh, well, no, no, because if, if you remember, um, I'm going across the same period, aren't I? Yeah, there's only one more period. Yeah, it's still smaller. It's still smaller. Okay. So, <laughs> Mg2 plus will have stronger attraction to the water molecules. So that's just one of those formulaic questions. Yeah. yeah. Ionic charge, ionic radius, stronger attraction. You know, it's um, you know, it's atoms, yeah. bonds, and groups where you have described the trend across the yeah. period as in shield disease. Yeah. Same thing. It's yeah. Acid, uh, okay, so we now go on to Bourne Harbor. Um. So it's got less enthalpy. If this is the lattice enthalpy, what must be at the top? On the top must be Mg2 plus gas plus 2 OH minus. <coughs> like so. Right, it doesn't matter which order you do this. I would probably, going down, you form the solution here, so I've got to hydrate both these ions. So that's going to be Mg2 plus. Do you only do one at a time? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, otherwise you don't need the second arrow, do you? Yeah, I just thought it was good. And then that's, so that, sorry, it's hydroxylis and the gas is safe. So it gives you that. So, guys, should we fill in our values? They want me to work out the lattice enthalpy. Yeah, they want me to work out the lattice enthalpy. Um, they've given me the hydration of Mg2 plus, so that's minus 1926. They've given me hydroxide, but what do I need to do to that? Two, yeah, two times minus 460. And they've also given me the enthalpy change of solution, which is minus 152 for that. I don't really know why I'm doing Yeah, I think some of you missed where that was in the question. Therefore, delta H lattice, this, if you do your circle, that side has to equal that side, is equal to um, minus 1926 minus 920, which means that delta H lattice equals minus 2694 kilojoules per mole. If the um, solution. Okay, so on to um, some entropy and entropy questions now. Explain the following. Why does the enthalpy change of solution? Oh no, sorry. Um, explain why when water melts or boils, delta H is positive, and why when water melts or boils, delta S increases. So the reason why delta H is positive, it means it's endothermic, and that's because you're breaking intermolecular forces, which requires energy. You're breaking bonds. Is that one mark? That's for one mark. Okay. When more water melts or boils, delta H increases. That's because a liquid is more disordered than a solid, and a liquid, yeah, and a gas is more disordered than a liquid, and therefore you are increasing the disorder, which is always a good thing. Therefore, entropy increases. Then, for the final mark, why it says why is it so much greater when water boils and when water melts? It's because a gas is far more disordered than a liquid, um, so you are increasing the disorder by a considerable amount. 